Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This will be my third attempt to share with you a most awesome message for the first rounders or the first fruits rapture, whatever you want to call it. Those of us who are out of here first. All right. Jesus referred to us as the barley harvest. You can check out my message that I got from him on February the 17th, 2016 on my home page. If you're logged in, that's what you'll get. If you're not logged in and you're like a visitor, you'll come to my video that's on how to be saved. <laughs> I don't know how that happened or how to fix it, but that's the way it is. Boy, don't my new glasses match this shirt. <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing goggles, but I guess the bigger they are, the more protection for my eyes, right? All right, so this, like I said, is my third attempt to share with you this message, which is long. And that's why I was trying to copy, I put it to clip converter, which has been giving me trouble here lately, not wanting to cooperate. And when I uploaded it the first time, I pulled up the wrong video and <laughs> accidentally reshared the one about Tim Henderson. So I had to pull it down. And then, which you know, any other time in the past, now this is really weird. Any video I tried to share that I, like, was mine, and I just wanted to reshare it, they wouldn't let me. Because they said, you are uploading a video you have already uploaded, like, two, uh, five years ago or something. Long time ago. Anyway, that didn't happen. So, let me just get started here, because this is an awesome message, and, and y'all need to hear it. All right, it's from Behold I Come at I am calling you now dot blogspot dot com. The links will be in the description box. Her scripture is Revelation twenty two twelve. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Jasper, be quiet. Tuesday, August the 18th, this was put up. Let's see, today is what? Thursday, August 20th. It's 3.50 p.m. Um, but she received it on August the 15th, and it's called The Keys to Transformation. Yahushua's Holy Spirit has expressed to me to remind his people of his urgent instructions. All who are followers of Yahushua, Jesus the Messiah, must very carefully examine every shred of teaching or prophecy that you accept as truth. Just because something sounds good, holy, or believable, does not make it so. Boy, howdy, that is so the truth. Just because a person is popular or posted all over the internet does not mean they are hearing clearly. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Uh, ignore. I don't know that number. I'm not expecting calls. They can leave a message. Okay, the devil's trying to keep me from putting this up, and I'm determined to do it. All right. Just because a person is popular, or po what was I saying earlier about those people preaching once saved, always saved. They have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, tens of thousands at least. I mean, way more than me, because the truth is just not popular. Okay, or posted all over the internet does not mean they are hearing clearly. Any message a person gives must always and consistently speak of Yahushua's sacrifice, the need for repentance, and focus on him and his word. The only way to know truth from deception is to know the word for yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Know the word yourself. Because it is in this way 
you can know or be intimate with Yahushua. His holy word is pure truth. And anyone speaking anything but this, or even a mixture of it, is to be avoided. There are so many voices now saying they have heard from the Lord. Many, many deliver mixed messages because they read and watch so many others that say they also hear from the Lord. And this only serves to engage the mind. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me get a sip of water. <clears throat> the body of his church can be easily confused and very distracted by all these different messages. Yahushua strongly recommends that each of his children study the scriptures as often as possible so his Holy Spirit can write his word on your heart. His Spirit will give you the discernment you need when you are obedient in this so you will not be swept away in a world gone crazy. Pray about fasting from the internet and looking at anything prophetic until you have disciplined yourself to immerse in the Word of God. This is especially important for those of you who are new to the church, to the body of Christ, not to a brick and mortar church. I mean, you've newly, you're newly saved, like under two years. Unless you're some kind of speed reader and you've been through it and had the Holy Spirit give you understanding, you need to know more of the Word. You need to have been in it every day. And see, because when you hear a word from the Lord, from the Lord, okay, and there's even one line in there that goes against Scripture, Every word is not going to be found in Scripture because we're getting new knowledge. The books that Daniel had to seal up and even John the Revelator had to swallow, those words are now coming out to life, okay? But the words should never go against what we know to be the Word of God. And yes, we know there's been this Mandel effect thing and there have been phrases changed. Like the wolf will lay down with the lamb. We know it's the lion will lay down with the lamb. Anybody that's my age or around here knows from years ago it was the lion will lay down with the lamb. And these people who claim, no, it's always been wolf. Well, that just goes to show how long it's been wrong. Okay, let me keep on. That's just a phrase here and there. That's usually not the problem. Um, but if Jesus did give a scripture or a uh, word and he said, and remember I promised you the wolf would lay down with the lamb, that, that would not be a red flag to somebody who's new in the word. But it would be to someone like me. So I have never seen anything like that happen, so I would not worry about it. But take all in discretion, take all... Um, what's the word? Okay, doesn't line up by a phrase like that. Take it to the Holy Spirit and pray for uh, the meaning. What? Why is this different here? Is this one thing make this whole message wrong? Or and he will, if you are sincere and seeking, you will learn, and he'll tell you. He'll lay it in your heart, or you'll hear it in your head. A still small voice say, check Geneva Bible from 1599 or something like that and see if it's different. It may not, they may all be changed. I don't know. But he'll tell you what to do. All right. Pray about fasting from the internet and looking at anything prophetic until you have disciplined yourself to immerse in the word of God. 
learning the deeper meanings of his word will help you immensely rather than searching the internet for a word from man. Soon enough, we will not have the internet to get a word from anyone from the Lord. So it is imperative that you learn to receive from him yourself. Things are changing so incredibly fast, and Yahushua is urging us to be prepared. The word and abiding in him is our only hope when all else crumbles. We've been taught and warned, and we need to obey. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Remember that man we prayed for? He was, I told you he was 32, but it turned out he was 44, and he had a 9 and 11 year old. Well, he died, and they donated all of his parts, his body organs, his corneas and everything, so that some other people could live. So some good came out of his death. Perhaps people were praying for those organs, and the Lord used him for that. I just pray he was ready to go home. Okay, so tomorrow he was 44 years old and basically a very healthy man. Otherwise, how do you get a stroke in your brain stem? I just kept asking myself that. It really devastated my friend's friend. It was his nephew. It was her nephew. But anyway, that's what this is. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Forget about bombs. There's car accidents. I mean, bricks can fall off of a building. You never know. You Tomorrow is never guaranteed, y'all. Get right with the Lord while you can. Please pray about seeking him more earnestly spending less time in the world and on the internet and more time learning of him he does not disappoint will you know his will for you and understand how he is speaking to you when all that is left is your bible do not simply believe the words i post either without always studying the scriptures that I list with each message. It is his Holy Spirit that will confirm the message, not me, not my internet reputation, only his spirit through his word. Please have printed copies of the warfare prayers and as many of the messages that you are able. We're out of time, Julie. Okay, that was a word from her, a warning. So now I'll get into the message. And she puts here a, a BibleHub.com slash interlinear. That's what Kathy and Dan use. Uh, she puts an excellent way to study to learn truth. I always go to BlueLetterBible.org. I'm sure there's others anywhere that has... Um, they're interlinear, interlinear, I noticed, like for every sentence spelled out, there's the number above each word or phrase. Whereas with Blue Letter Bible, I have to click on tools, and then it pulls it up below, and I can go down and get that. So I'm just used to it, you know, whichever you prefer. It's good to go back to the Hebrew or Greek. Okay. Matthew 24, 11, King James Version says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. All right, here's the word. I am the door, the only way, the gate through which you must enter in to reach my kingdom. A door means there are keys given but only to those who walk with me. Mysteries will be revealed to those who walk in obedience. See, there's that. If you love me, you will obey my commands. Walk in obedience. I open the door to those who walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, brothers and sisters. Since I am the door, the portal, 
through which you must enter to know the mysteries I will show to you. I provide the keys necessary to open this door, this portal, so that things not of this world can be revealed to you. I wish to give you further revelation as to the keys you have been given, my loved ones. Keys open and keys shut. There are keys of knowledge and keys can be applied for greater wisdom to be granted. If you receive my words and hide my commandments within you, if you walk in the fear of the Lord, if you will be open to my wisdom and pray for understanding and knowledge, it will be granted to you. It your free choice, I'm sorry, your free will choices utilize keys in the spirit that either open doors or mysteries to my kingdom or cause them to remain shut. There is a law of cause and effect in this life. Every thought, word, or action has an effect. Sometimes you will see it manifest in the physical, natural world, but there will always be an effect in the spiritual realm. Remember how I have talked to you about paradigm shifts? The power that is available to you through your obedience and faith in me can only be understood if you understand that my presence in and through you will alter everything around you. My presence in you shifts frequencies that are of a lower nature into a higher one, resulting in an effect that you will soon realize more fully once I completely indwell you. Permission is granted to my righteous ones to take the keys using my authority and walk through me, the door, to achieve a higher maturity, a greater revelation into another dimension and higher frequency. This will release my glory in this realm. It will bring truth where there is darkness. It will set captives free from the bondage of the lower realm and cause heaven and my kingdom to come and earth as it is in heaven. It is by faith to take these keys and gain access to things previously unknown. I will not force a choice on any soul and therefore you must freely make the choice to stand on the solid ground of my word, fully submitting to me in every aspect of your life, in order that I then will move on your behalf as your will aligns with my will. When this alignment occurs, the impossible becomes possible. And I then bring the supernatural into the natural in and through my instruments of righteousness. When you walk by faith and not by sight, I do the work here in and through you that you were purposed and sent to do. There's some heavy words here. There is also a frequency or vibrational shift to this walk of faith that occurs in your very cells 
as you give permission for your temples to come back into alignment with your creator. Energy and greater power are released in the natural realm with this shift when you learn to apply my spiritual blood sacrifice pure truth unveiled in these temples you reside in. Wow! You were created in our image made of flesh and blood but yet spirit. Your spirit took on a vehicle just as my spirit one with my father took on a vehicle of flesh and blood to show you the way. I am the way. I came to free you from the curse of the fall of man. And I took on a fleshly form in order to have my flesh die and then rise so that my blood, which is the blood that carries life, could be applied to the mercy seat for you. By doing this, I made a way for you who are under the curse to be set free by the truth that I embodied and manifested. Here is truth. The life is in the blood and your DNA is divinely designed because you are made in our image. Oh, that is what Satan is trying so hard to change. Is he not, brothers and sisters? Yes, he is. When I rose and my blood covered the mercy seat, access was granted to you, a way made through truth, through me, who is perfect truth to free you from the curse and to show Satan that all who are made in our image and who choose to align themselves with me will be set free. I overcame death, not just death of the flesh, but spiritual eternal death. I was the example of eternal life, transforming from corruptible to incorruptible. When the fall occurred, the light of my love and my truth was greatly diminished on the earth, but especially in my creation. Those who we had made, the temples made of flesh, no longer completely resonated with their creator on a cellular level. And the light and truth that I am was not able to be fully activated and functional in this realm as it was meant to be. There was a corruption and because of sin, this prevented man from operating in his fullest potential. Truth was veiled and deception entered and grew. Satan knew that if he could corrupt through sin and then mix serpent seed with the blood of those in my image, my blood, which holds the truth and is the life Man would walk in darkness and never find the way which is me. He is manipulating the blood of life now even more than ever before, furiously and aggressively as artificial intelligence is being implemented everywhere. His goal is to destroy all those made in my image through his through this corruption of the blood by altering DNA so you will be spiritually lost forever. He believes he can destroy the seed of Messiah in my people. Oh, I pray that nobody takes that vaccination or the mark of the beast that goes with it. The proof you have it.
That's going to alter your DNA. All right, moving on. This is why I came in the flesh to reveal truth. That eternal life is in my blood. The blood-bought sacrifice and all who believe in me as their Redeemer will have eternal life. Use these keys of knowledge to reveal this truth in your own temple. I am my word and my word is truth. Therefore, when you apply the word, my truth and my blood in every aspect of your life, changes occur, not just in the flesh, but in your spirit. It is in this way that you bring yourself back into alignment with me, activating the DNA I have placed within you that carries my light and my truth and which shatters all darkness. Applying my blood to the door of your heart, walking in my truth and my statutes, allows the brilliance of my love to flood every cell of your being and transform that which was carnal and dead to that which is alive eternally. It is in this way that I remain enthroned on your heart and nothing evil can enter in. Another key to understanding and knowledge is then is to then implement this revelation to all aspects of your life by frequent repentance, seeking me, and living in obedience. Your application of these truths consistently will then literally transform you on a cellular level. As you continue to stand on truth, implementing it, you move from glory to glory. This is known as transcendence. You are leaving a lower frequency and shifting higher, closer and closer to your Creator. There is a great deal of power and authority that is released when one of my children walks in this way. I release to you who are walking this way all that is required for your journey with me here. The higher you choose to come into intimacy with me, the more I release to you. The Father of Lights gives good gifts to his children. And the storehouses of heaven are open. This spiritual discipline and application in your life will continue to allow the release of my blessings and gifts during your journey here until I come for my first fruits collectively. Your transformation is an ongoing process of continual sanctification and purification by refinement and a constant free will choice to walk in complete faith, standing on my promises. I have told you before, a moment-by-moment moment mikvah is required an ongoing repentance and renewing in your temple as you stand on me the rock and your solid ground every thought word or action and its effect will then be just as I have designed it for my glory alone it is in walking this way that you shift the paradigm, the dynamics all around you and all you come in contact with. Although you are at this time not fully aware of the results of this shift, you are taught to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be circumspect and prayerful 
about each and everything you say and do. And your destiny will unfold before you as you come into harmony with my will for you. I tell you that you must be born again. And even this has many layers. It's not a one-time prayer and you're done, son. That's me adding that. As many believe, it's not once saved, always saved. Listen to this. I tell you that you must be born again. And even this has many layers. This rebirth I speak about must be something you commit to each day. In every moment. I only said what my father said and did what I saw my father do. Are you not to do the same? I gave the example while on earth. Walk in my footsteps. Take up your cross and follow me. Let's see, where was I? <clears throat> Let me get a sip. Trust me and obey. Manifest my presence here on earth. Glorify our Father in heaven in every breath. Love as I have loved you. Forgive as I forgive. Have mercy and mercy will be shown to you. Pray for your enemies and those who persecute you. Freely give, and it will be given to you. Press down, shaken together and running over, shall men give to you. Be holy as I am holy. If my impact on earth as the Son of God can have the effect I had when, excuse me, when I had, <clears throat> let me start over. If my impact on earth as the Son of God can have the effect I had when I walked this earth, Imagine what the effects will be when all my remnant walk in this way, fully glorifying our Father in heaven. It is then you will remember my saying, you will do all these things and more. Collectively, my presence in all my chosen throughout the world will change the world forever. It is not only a personal transformation, but a transformation of the earth as heaven invades. Oh, I bet Satan is shaking in his boots with this. He knows it's coming. What you are seeing now in the natural play out is not your reality. It is an illusion designed by Satan to deceive you into believing lies and to prevent you from walking as a son or daughter of the Most High. If you continue to live in sin and your focus is on the darkness, judgment, and hopelessness, that is all you will know. Continue to commit sin, and you are the bond servant of sin. So you see, when you choose to serve me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, in faith, this allows the use of the keys I have given you to then be able to perceive a better way, my way, my design for all that is happening, all that I allow. My remnant 
have their complete focus on me and the fulfillment of my word and therefore are looking towards the things of heaven, of home, and not of things of the earth, which is soon to pass away. My desire is that all will be filled with joy and peace. I give in the knowing that you are the generation which will soon, which will see my soon return. I will bring glory and revival in the hearts of my people and the darkness that I will allow now to rule over the lands will only be permitted for a short season. Then the whole world will know, every knee will bow, and every tongue confess that I am the Lord. You will see this day and rejoice as the ending for my beloved is not one of despair and hopelessness, but rather a transformation into a new beginning, the eternal shift from mortal to immortal. Hallelujah! Shout praise the Lord! Flesh to spirit, as I move you from glory to glory, Woo-ha! I cannot stress to you enough. So be, be so very careful with your eyes. See, I'm sorry. Be so very careful what your eyes see and your ears hear as fewer and fewer across the earth speak my truth. The darkness will continue as I said for a time. But truly, I tell you, I am about to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I were to tell you. I will set the world on fire with my love manifested through you, my chosen ones. You will run and not grow weary. You will see the rewards for your faithfulness. And you will have recompense for all the enemy has stolen from you. And I will heal you and prosper you. You will see your enemy's defeat as you perform signs and wonders in my name. This day is upon you, my loves. This is why your positioning remains so crucial. Do not look to the left or to the right. Only look up. Your redemption comes. The king is jealous for his beloved, and I am coming for my first fruits. While judgment by famines, pestilence, disease, war, and the beast system rage all around you, I will hide you in the shelter of my wing. My angels surround you on all sides, and no harm will come to my sealed, anointed ones. Sealed. Who gets sealed in Revelation chapter 7? 144,000. Okay, let me continue. My grace is enough for you, and is preparing you for what is now here. Pray to walk in your full measure of faith and for wisdom discerning what I am speaking to you, and it will be given. Pray to be used mightily, and it shall be done. Greater is he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. Although it appears that the enemy is prevailing, there is a reason this is occurring. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. It is time, too, for my remnant to take their full authority and position in me and use the keys which I have provided. As I have said before, there is a great separation occurring as the winnowing is taking place 
all those who refuse to obey me and seek truth, which has always been available, will now be separated from those who are closest to my heart. Let me reread that. All those who refuse to obey me and seek truth, which has always been available, will now be separated from those who are closest to my heart. This is my design, so do not lose heart. The key is your perspective. Set your mind on things above not on things of this world and watch what I will do. Wow, what a word. Truly, you are in a season like no other and you have been chosen for this time of now. Walk with the faith that moves mountains and you will receive the crown of life. My kingdom is not for the faint of heart. My kingdom is for the overcomers, the strong and the courageous in spirit who worship me in spirit and in truth. It belongs to the meek and the humble, the contrite of heart and the servants, for it is you who the world scorns and rejects ridicules and mocks that will rule the nations as kings and priests. I will bring the haughty low and the low I will raise to positions of honor. I will bring recompense where it is due and the truth will reign. So rise up my men and women of valor. Rise up and use your keys. It is time. Yahushua. And I will put the scriptures. Uh, there's John, Colossians, Matthew, Proverbs, Psalms, James, Job, Galatians. Many, many scriptures. Well, uh, I don't know if they'll fit. In, they'll probably have to go in the first comment. And it would do... Anyone who's not really, really, really well versed in the Bible to take the time out to look them all up just to see for yourself how many scriptures the Lord referenced in this word alone. Okay, with that I'm going to say that I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and it will go up. You will not stop this one, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus over my computer and my internet connection and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connection so you can hear it. With that I'll say, bye for now. I'll talk to you later.